Welcome to the tower entrance. If you had plans of speedrunning Spectre of Torment, this is really the only video you need to focus on. All the other stages, you can get by, you can figure it out, you can certainly make do. But Tower 1 takes everything from all the other stages, puts them all into one stage, and then beats you over the head with it. Rail Mail and Judgment Rush are really going to help you out here more than any other level. Darkness is kind of heavy at the start, but there's plenty of pickups, so it's not really an issue, and you can always grab some backup darkness throughout the stage. They are pretty generous about it. That said, you are not so fortunate when it comes to health. There's only really two spots that you can pick up health at that aren't terribly out of the way. And again, the seasoned player will not need to pick up health or magic to defeat Black Knight. So here we are in the Tower Crusher section. This is a, a small break halfway through the stage, since you can't speed up a lot of it. But after this point, you're going to deal with more terrible enemies and more rooms that can easily kill you. Grabbing the checkpoint and health after the Crusher section is highly recommended for beginning players, but eventually you won't need it. There are a lot of tricks that have made these rooms much less terrifying, much less painful to deal with, and much less run killing. That said, we are compensating by adding some new stuff that's really terrifying and um, pretty scary, but uh, very reliable, so I would suggest that even though it's kind of terrifying, you start to include it in your runs as soon as possible. It does save a decent chunk of time. The auto scroller is also a decent break. I suggest that you take your chance to breathe, enjoy the music, enjoy the view, because Black Knight is coming and Black Knight will not take your shit. Black Knight, unlike the other bosses for Spectre's campaign, does not care about your weapons. He does not care about your ability to rail. He doesn't care about Judgment Rush. He just wants you to suffer. When you get to the end of the auto scroller, you have one last trick to worry about. And then from here on out, you'll have just the long ride down. There's a small leap at the end of this section, and if you jump over that upwards rail, then you can catch the darkness. Uh, but you will have to stop if you plan on picking up the food that's under the dinner plate. Again, it's entirely possible to defeat Black Knight without picking up the extra darkness or health, but if you are not comfortable with it, and this is where most people grab extra health upgrades in the Will Skull, that's what it's there for. I'm going to demonstrate how to fight him on the ground, but I'm going to teach you how to fight him in the air, because the air battle is the only one that's ever really consistent. I messed up, which is my own fault, however, if you do mess up the air battle, it's very easy to pick it back up. You just have to stay calm and continue attacking him. And understand what Black Knight is going to do. Black Knight himself has a very consistent set of behavior. But once he's on the ground, you have to throw that out the window. And that's why I prefer to fight him in the air. But before we talk about Black Knight, let's start back at the beginning of the stage. You need to be mashing jump and attack during the fade in to get Spectre to hop out of the hole and then immediately start using your judgment rushes. I like to save a couple frames by jumping off the wall before I do my next rush after the first one and then I cut the bubbles so that I can hold right and start grinding immediately. Use judgment rush again as soon as you can see the dark wisdom and then immediately afterwards so that you can target the cricket before he gets off screen. This first pot cycle is not difficult to catch however if you screw up then you're going to end up losing time really quickly. Try and get two dash attacks on this wisdom, one up and then one down, and then as you skate underneath, wait for the fire, jump over it, and then jump into the fire that's coming down and damage boost yourself up onto the ledge. If you care to take your time on that section instead, then don't use Judgment Rush to hold yourself in the air, you'll target the other cricket unless if you've killed it. For the quick books, it's really easy to do as long as you have ram mail, so any percent has no problems with this trick. Do not start climbing up that wall, just make sure you drop down, attack the fish, and then grind underneath the second fish and hold forward. You'll catch the side of the bookcase, you won't die in the lava. For timing purposes, I allow myself to flip off the side of the second to last bookcase, and then I climb up the last bookcase so that I don't have to worry about going too early or too late. As soon as you enter this room, a judgment rush will get you across to the Red Wisdom. Do not start climbing immediately. Let yourself rise a little bit. That way, when you start walking up the wall, you don't have to ledge hop. You can just jump directly onto the platform and then grind across the first two. This will also get you a darkness pickup so that you can have more mana for the rest of the stage. Judgment rush as soon as you enter the rat room. Try to position yourself next to the second rat so that you get an upwards dash. 
Uh, rat RNG is very irritating in this room. Just be ready to react and be ready to rush again. Rush the Dark Griffin and then do not start grinding into this room. You want to actually wait until you get to the Crusher room. Start grinding as soon as you walk off the ledge. This will make it so that when you hold right, you'll actually get underneath the crushing platform and you can make it up very quickly without having to worry about timing your jump or spacing it properly. As soon as you see the Duck Knight, you have to Judgment Rush him. You'll barely be able to make it with unupgraded Judgment Rush. If you're too late, the Spike Ball may hit you, so turn left and you can cut it to send it back the other way. You'll still be able to make it, but do not let that Spike Ball hit you, and do not go too slowly. Otherwise, when that crushing platform is off screen, it no longer exists and you'll die. The Death Plane is really high up. From here on out, you really can't speed things up in the Crusher section. You shouldn't have any problems keeping up with the platforms as you have access to new areas. At this point, you might want to swap to your Skeletal Sentry. There is a trick that you can do if you want to save a little bit more time, but it's not necessary. And if you feel like you're going to fall at any given point, you can use Judgment Rush to continue keeping yourself afloat until the platforms will catch you. As these platforms are moving upwards, if you were to walk off, you would die, so you have to wait until they at least start going downwards, and I would walk just to be extra safe. There's no point that you really can't go any faster. Once you get past the pink banner, you can start grinding again, and when you do, make sure you have your skeletal sentry equipped. You want to jump, toss it, and detonate it as quickly as you can, then get moving. Do a big jump, and then start grinding. And when you dash attack this onion, make sure that you let yourself linger in the air for a second before you start climbing upwards. This way you won't fall short and it's, it gets really messy if you don't make it over that ledge. But you can always use Judgment Rush to catch yourself and try and make it so that it's facing you to the right afterwards so that you don't have to worry about jumping around in that section. There's your dinner plate, you can hit that as you fall down and you can wait for it and hit the checkpoint while you're waiting for the food. But it's slower to do so. Keep in mind that you're about to face three Gravediggers and Bertha, so that food is very tempting. For the first Gravedigger, start grinding as soon as you can and jump when you approach the tombstone. It shouldn't hit you as you jump over it. For the second one, you can just continuously grind past him. You don't have to jump like I do, but I didn't want to fight the current, so if you do a small hop, you'll regain some of your speed. Be careful though, you could end up jumping straight into the pit if you're not used to the timing for it, so practice it before you include it in your runs. The last Gravedigger can also be skipped, just make sure that as you approach the final waterfall platform, you don't hold right, you just climb over the ledge and then start grinding. You'll activate the Gravedigger if you go too far to the right, so by building up a little bit of speed there, you can jump over him and start climbing up the ladder. Alternatively, when you get to the Gravedigger, you can do a dash attack off of him and then hold upright so that you start climbing the ladder immediately. This will prevent you from taking damage and allow you to leave the room, although it is a bit slower. Some of the last ladder hopping tricks in the game right here, and these are some of the ones that actually save more time as well. So try and get the timing down. This is a good area to practice it, and this is actually one of the first spots in the game where we included ladder hopping. Once you get to the top of the ladder, hold down left to start grinding, and as soon as you see yourself off the ledge, stop holding down. You need to just bounce into the ceiling. If you hold down left, you'll start up another grind ever so briefly, and that second bounce will launch you into the spikes. So again, you want to just do down left until you fall off the ledge, and then hold just left. You can literally just keep holding left from that point. And when you approach the slime block with the birder, just wait until you drop down a bit before you start walking up it. Then do an attack to break it, you'll drop down, and then mash your attack and you'll attack the birder and you'll be out of the room. Now with Steve's final blessing, you may continue with your run. As you grind into this room, jump into a slash so that you break free the electrified slime there. And when it drops down, you'll be doing another dash attack up off of it onto the ladder. At this point, you ask yourself why that checkpoint isn't on the other side of the wall, because this room has your last encounter with Bertha, and it can be very deadly. Jump up high to activate the invisible floor, and then I like to jump as I get over this ledge. It is possible to get a dash attack whiff off of Bertha, but if you do it too early, you'll bonk into her. And you really need to keep your pace consistent so that Bertha won't screw you over at the end of this room. When you approach the Gold Duck Knight, once you get past the halfway point of that little grate in the background, you can do a Judgment Rush. Do not hold right, let yourself continue rising off the rush and you'll actually get just over that ledge. Once you see that you've gotten over the ledge, just start grinding. Don't worry, you're invincible from Judgment Rush, you won't get hit by the spike ball. And don't hold right, otherwise you're going to start climbing up that ledge. Bertha is coming, you need to do a dash attack off of her. Keep holding right from here, she'll go under the water and you'll have just enough time to grab the ledge and hop over it before she bites you again. This is a very scary trick, 
but it is consistent. So practice it, it should work every time. In this room before the auto scroller, you have access to a checkpoint and some food, but it's much faster to skip both of those. If you grind off the ledge and wait until you're below the center platform, you'll get a dash reticle just in time to save yourself. This trick is pretty scary, but it's very consistent. I've been including it in my runs for a long time, so don't be afraid to try it out. Once you make it past Bertha, honestly, there's not much else that'll really kill you for the rest of the stage. The auto scroller is your last chance to take a moment and relax and breathe. You can have a little fun, don't get yourself killed. After this stage, you're going to be picking up Charge Slash, so you just need to make sure you have at least 3,000 gold. The armor is 6k, and Black Knight awards 3,000 for defeating him. At this point, you want to make sure you're on this platform and that you start doing dash attacks off the slime to get basically off screen. After the third dash attack, I usually hold right and I'm standing on that ledge. Jump over the ledge and make sure that you're over by where the words boss appear. When Spectre's mask begins touching the empty boss health bubbles, I do a short hop, grind, and jump. The lantern will barely swing on screen so you can do a dash attack off of it, and then you can do another dash attack off the other lantern. If you look at the input display, you'll see that I'm wiggling around trying to make sure I grab the ladder. You won't be able to tell what you're doing, so you'll have to get a feel for finding it, and you have to make sure you do it quickly. Don't just hold left or you won't grab the ladder at all and you'll fall back down. One more ladder hop here, try and get two clean hops so that you can start grinding at the top. And then finally you're on your way to Black Knight 2. Again, Black Knight 2 is a very difficult fight, especially compared to all the other knights, especially compared even to the first couple knights that you fight without your skeletal sentry equipped. Here you have one final opportunity to regain darkness and grab food. So here will be the demonstration of how to do a perfect aerial battle with Black Knight. Again, this is the most consistent fight, so this is the one that I recommend that you practice. And I will show off how you can fight him on the ground. I will show off some other ways to deal with him, but you really just want to get used to fighting him in the air. As soon as you can start moving, you need to do a full jump, and there's a small platform that you're standing on. Wait until you are just right of the line there on the floor. Then do another full jump, turn left, and do a dash attack off of Black Knight. This timing is crucial, so make sure that you practice this, because if you screw it up, this is how Black Knight is going to start doing an attack that will cause him to fall onto the ground and force you into a ground battle. With your dash attack, you're going to be damage boosted to the right, then push him to the right wall with some attacks. You may or may not end up dealing damage on that first hit, but once you do get that bounce, you need to start attacking him consistently from here on out. This isn't mashing, this is like when you fought him in planes, you need to make sure that you're a certain distance away from him so that he won't just pass through you. You need to keep bouncing him into the wall. If you didn't have proper timing for this first section of the fight, instead of doing magnetic dirt, he's going to try and slam Terrapin into the ground. If you hit Black Knight while he jumps off of Terrapin, you're going to knock him off Terrapin and you're going to force a ground battle. But focusing back on the aerial battle, once you've done about 7 attacks off of Black Knight, he's going to have most of his dirt accumulated. At this point, you want to make sure that you land on Black Knight and you want to take damage so that you'll be boosted to the left. As you start falling down, get attacks off on him as quickly as possible. This is where you're mashing. You want to make sure that you're pretty much right on top of him. That first attack shouldn't move him at all. The second attack will. And then you want to make sure that you're also right on top of where he will be and when you will be able to attack as soon as possible. If you do these three attacks successfully, then when Black Knight bounces off the wall after the third attack, he won't do some weird type of lingering. Instead, you'll be able to continue attacking him, bouncing off the wall repeatedly. You'll take damage after that third attack. Don't worry about it, don't let it rattle you, just keep mashing your attacks until you are stable enough to time your attacks. After about four of these stable attacks, with Black Knight bouncing against the wall, He's going to try and slam Terrapin down. You have to make sure that you don't hit him at this point, otherwise you'll knock him off. So attack Terrapin, you'll get a clean bounce if you do it early enough. Do it twice, you'll get another clean bounce without moving him at all, and then you continue fighting him in the air from here. These last six hits aren't difficult. Keep calm because you're basically in the clear, just make sure that you keep adjusting yourself. You want to keep bouncing Black Knight off the wall while he's shooting lasers. It is very possible that you might have missed too many attacks at this point. If he finishes his laser attack, he might linger against the wall, and then shortly afterwards he'll start winding up Terrapin to bounce off the walls. While he's winding up Terrapin, that'll be your last chance to finish him off before you force a ground battle, where he'll only have about 3 health left. Keep in mind that when Black Knight is off of Terrapin, if he ever reaches half a health, he's immediately going to try and jump back onto Terrapin. He'll just warp wherever he is and do a straight jump onto Terrapin.
Now in this footage, I started the fight about the same, but because I was slightly off on my timing, when I did my second attack, he tried to slam down Terrapin and I knocked him off. A ground battle can be just as fast, however, it's incredibly difficult and dangerous. I do two grounded attacks and then he attempts to dodge my next attack, so I jump into a damage boost off of Terrapin so he won't interrupt me as I continue attacking Black Knight. From here on out, you need to stay on top of Black Knight at all costs. Taking damage appropriately is incredibly difficult so that Black Knight doesn't get away from you. Every third attack, if you stay on top of Black Knight and keep him stun locked, he's going to do a dodge. After that third attack, back up and get into position, then push him back into the corner. After you've whittled him down to about half his health or less, Terrapin should start ramping up an attack. Do your best to keep Black Knight stunned, but make sure that you take damage appropriately. Keep in mind that Terrapin's ramming attack will do a full heart of damage, so if you don't have the health for it or if you'd rather be safe, take body contact damage from Black Knight. You pretty much never want to do an airborne dash attack against Black Knight because of how much recovery you have between your attacks. But if he starts doing shovel drops, you're going to have to resort to one to knock him out of the air again. Once Black Knight is really low on health, you'll just want to do dash attacks to finish him off. This seems to be a recurring pattern, but if you do consistent damage on Black Knight on the ground battle, he won't actually do his dodge onto Terrapin at half an HP. This is kind of a rare occurrence, but it seems to be that whenever you do consistent damage in a ground battle, you can actually finish him off before he jumps onto Terrapin. Otherwise, you'll have to get into position to attack him the moment he lands on Terrapin. You'll either be invincible and you'll be doing a dash attack as soon as he lands, or you can throw a skeletal sentry and detonate at the moment he lands on Terrapin. Now if you really, really want to do a grand battle from the very beginning, you are welcome to do so. I highly do not recommend this. But to get yourself started, when the fight begins, we're going to walk up to that same black line just in front of Spectre. Jump, throw a Skelebro, detonate it immediately, jump again immediately, throw and detonate another Skelebro. Jump over the shock that Terrapin creates, get in position to attack Black Knight, he'll usually do a dodge to the right. I was not anticipating him to dodge that time, so I let him get out of place. But counting those two Skelebro detonates, your next attack should force him to dodge. From here it's one, two, three, he'll dodge. Again, dealing with Terrapin is very irritating, but make sure that you get into position and keep Black Knight stunned as much as you can. Keep attacking Black Knight while keeping an eye on Terrapin while counting how many hits you've done. This is why I don't like the ground fight. There's so many things you have to keep track of. But with any luck, you should be able to force Black Knight down to half an HP again. Now, I wasn't quick enough to get over there and attack him before he could get away, so I started bouncing him off the walls. But climbing back up is very easy, and then you can attack him once he's in the air. Or you can try and detonate your Skelebro before he gets away from you. And now for the hottest mess I can imagine, it's a two-on-two -two matchup. Using Skeletal Sentry can help you out when you're fighting Black Knight. You'd start the fight the exact same way with two detonates, and then if you feel like doing so, you can throw a Skelebro to get some additional hits on him. The problem is, is that now you're going to lose track of how many hits you've done on Black Knight. Terrapin will usually end up destroying the Skeletal Sentry because your Skeletal Sentry can really only take a couple of hits. These guys do a lot of damage to him. I recommend detonating your Sentry so that you can at least get some explosive damage on Black Knight. But again, this fight is far more chaotic. And before long, Black Knight will more than likely jump back onto Terrapin and force you to finish the fight in the air. The results are usually always the same, so just make sure that you're consistent at dealing with Black Knight one way or the other to prevent your runs from just dying to him continually. So again, here's going to be your perfect air battle, and this is fairly difficult to do, make sure you practice it, and at least be ready to make adjustments. Two full jumps, dash attack, boost to the right. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, take damage, attack, 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 take damage, 1, 2, 3, 4, he'll slam, bounce off Terrapin twice, he'll start doing lasers soon, and you should be clear to finish him from here. I like to time my tech skip for the moment I see Black Knight get up, but for the second one you're just going to have to feel it out because there's no visual indicator. Congratulations, you've survived Terra 1, and if you have at least 6k gold, you should be heading over to Manny. The Striker's Shawl is on the far right, and after you buy it, you'll no longer be able to grind around. Unlike Shovel Knight, when you charge up, you'll be able to move at full speed. 
speak to Dolphy, I mean the Dark Acolyte, one more time, and you'll be on your way to the Enchantress. In the final episode, we'll be covering how to deal with the last two bosses. Till then, stay spooky.